Hello, this is John from WHMCS. In this tutorial, I will be showing you what to do after receiving your first order and providing an overview of the client management section of the administration area. So congratulations, you've received your first order. Let's take a look at the next steps you should take. Begin by going to Orders, Pending Orders. Here, you'll see the order listed with some basic information such as the order number, the client's name, the amount paid, the status of the payment and the status of the order itself. Click the order ID to see more details. For the purposes of this example, I have configured WHMCS to wait until I accept the order before provisioning anything, so the screen looks like this. Now it's time to check the client's name and address against known fraudsters and check their payment details with your payment processor. Once you're happy to provide these services to the client, let's choose our server and domain registrar before clicking accept order. This will provision the hosting account and register the domain name. If you've configured WHMCS to automatically provision the accounts, these options will not be displayed, but you'd still accept the order in the same way. Now let's review the client management section of WHMCS. Go to Clients, View, Search, Clients and click on the client we wish to view. This page can also be accessed by searching for the client in the top right corner or using the advanced search on the left sidebar. This is the summary tab. It provides an overview of the client's details, some quick billing and service statistics, quick links to many common management actions, as well as a list of all their services, domains and add-ons. Click the ID of the hosting service to view more details. The products slash services tab can be accessed directly via the client's product slash service menu or by searching for the domain name or username. From this tab you can see the product, the domain, username and password on the left hand column and billing settings in the right hand column. It is from here one would change the amount the client pays as well as their renewal date. In this example, the client is paying $5 per month for the silver package and their next renewal payment is due on the 25th of March 2016. The recurring amount reflects the total the client will be billed on their next invoice for this service, inclusive of configurable options and discounts. Should you wish to change the client's renewal date, adjust the next due date setting. Provided no previous invoice has ever existed for this particular service on this particular next due date, a new invoice will be generated for the upcoming month when the next invoicing run is done. Similarly, if an invoice has ever existed for this particular service on a given next due date, a duplicate will never be generated, even if the original invoice is cancelled or deleted. Further down the page we have the module command buttons. These interact directly with the hosting server. The create button will create an account on the server using the domain, username and password entered above. The suspend button will put the account in the server's suspended state, typically denying access to the website and administrative control panel, but not the WHMCS client area. The unsuspend button reverses this. The change package button will change the package assignment on the server to the currently selected product in WHMCS. Use the products slash service drop down to change the new product and then click the button. Please note this will not affect the client's billing. The change password button will change the client's server password to that currently stored in WHMCS. To use a new password, first type it into the password field, click save changes and then use the button. The terminate button triggers the server's termination function and will typically delete the client's data and account from the server, but not from WHMCS. Finally, to delete the record of this service from WHMCS, click the small delete link at the bottom of the tab. The other item in this order was a domain name, so let's take a look at that. From the summary tab, click the ID of the domain registration to see more information. The domains tab can be accessed directly via the client's domain registration menu or by searching for the domain name. This tab contains details of the client's domain, as well as the ability to edit name servers and who is details, apply and remove the registry lock, move to another client and delete the domain. It is from here one would change the amount the client pays as well as their renewal date. In this example, the client is paying $25 per year 
and their next renewal payment is due on the 25th of February 2017, which is the same day as the domain's expiry date. The recurring amount reflects the total the client will be billed on their next invoice for this domain and the registration period is how many years this will cover. So if the client wants to renew their domain for two years when it's next due for renewal, change the recurring amount to $50 and the registration period to two years. Next are the name server fields. Each time the page loads, the values displayed here are queried live from your domain registrar, so they are always up to date. To change the name servers, enter new values and click Save Changes. Beneath that, we have the Registrar Lock checkbox. Tick this to initiate the transfer lock for the domain and untick it to unlock the domain. Next are the Registrar Command buttons. These interact directly with your domain registrar. The Register button will send a registration command to the registrar for this domain. The Transfer button initiates the transfer process for this domain at your registrar. The Renew button will send a domain renewal command to your domain registrar for the number of years specified in the registration period field. This will not invoice the client. The Modify Contact Details button shows the current WHOIS details for this domain and allows them to be changed. Finally, the Get EPP Code button will obtain the current authorization code for the domain from the registrar. Some registrars will email it to the domain's registrant contact, while others will display it on screen immediately. Further down the page, we have the Management Tool checkboxes. Toggling these options will enable and disable the various domain add ons which you may offer for this TLD. Click Save Changes, and the recurring amount will automatically be adjusted. The last option is Disable Auto Renew. When this option is ticked, the client will not be automatically invoiced for the renewal of their domain when the next due date approaches. However, they can still renew manually via the client area. Finally, to delete the record of this domain from WHMCS, click the small delete link at the bottom of the tab. That completes this brief overview of client management and handling your first order. Thanks for watching.